Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Those of you who know me well know that I typically don't do samples. Even when it comes to recording drums, my preference is to track live drums and just do the best that I can to get the sound that I want at the source. With all that said, I'm fully aware that most modern productions will use some type of samples in order to augment the performances. I was recently made aware of a free sample pack from Black Octopus called the Karen Angry Vocal Samples. If you're not familiar with the term Karen, I definitely invite you to check out Andre Antoon's Karen Metal 3 Victoria's Secret Edition. This Karen sample pack contains about a hundred different Karen snippets to help you find the best can I speak to your manager or I'm calling the police vocal sample to complement your project. Since I'm not that well versed in using samples in Reaper, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to learn as well as to teach you to use the Media Explorer in Reaper to create sample databases. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is from a writing session some friends and I recently had. We spent maybe 10 to 15 minutes just coming up with a riff and writing a few lines to go along with it just to see how it would sound. I even used a few of those Karen samples in the beginning just to make the intro a little bit more interesting. Let's take a listen to work in progress, then I'll show you how to use that Media Explorer to set up your databases. Your ass is crap. This is our property. No, what I'm saying to you, okay. it pays to be considerate in right. this world. Not too bad for just a few minutes of getting together and having a jam session. Let's go back to the intro and take a listen to a few of these samples isolated. Your ass yeah. is grass. This is our property. No, what I'm saying to you, okay. it pays to be considerate in right. this world. You're breaking the law, but not having the dogs on a leash and picking up your poop. These samples are absolutely hilarious. I'll show you the way that I inserted these samples, and then let's take a look at a much more efficient way. I started off by opening up the folder that contains the samples. You pull this over to the correct monitor, and I'll go to my external drive, and my Reaper sample library folder, which I actually just created. And inside of that, I've got my Black Octopus Sound Karen Angry Vocals sample pack, and more subfolders inside of this. What I ended up doing is clicking on each of these and taking a listen to them inside of VLC Media Player and then just dragging them into Reaper. Now that does work. If I move this window down and just grab a random sample and drag it up here, Reaper does import that file. Let's take a listen. Oh God, ooh. <laughs> As I said, that does work, but it's a bit inefficient because I have to continuously go outside of Reaper, check in a third-party program just to make sure that I'm listening to the right sample that I want, and then drag it right back into Reaper. Let's take a look at the Media Explorer. You can access the Media Explorer by clicking on View and Media Explorer. With the Media Explorer open, we can see a relative path to the project directory, and I can see all of the audio that's currently contained in this project. To navigate to my samples, however, I'll need to go to my computer, and drill down these paths until I can find the right location. So I'll double click on my external hard drive, go to my Reaper sample library, drill down even further into the Black Octopus sound pack, and the next subfolder for vocal samples. Now that I'm in here, I can preview each of them by single clicking, and I'll move this up so you can see the bottom of the dialog, and we can see that I can also change the pitch as well as the play rate of the sample. I can click on any of the columns inside the Media Explorer to sort by that column, we're currently sorted by file name, but I think I'd like to resort these based on the length of the sample. So I'll click my length column. I'll click it one more time to invert the sort. And I've got my longest clips up top. Let's single click and take a listen. Okay, well it's illegal to take pictures of people that they don't have to give you permission. If I like that particular sample, but I wanted to hear it at a lower pitch, I can go down to the bottom dialog, adjust my pitch wheel, and play again. Okay, well it's illegal to take pictures of people that they don't have to give you permission. And beside the pitch wheel, we also have the rate wheel. I can make this play faster or slower. Let's go for one and a half speed. And try again. Okay, well, it's illegal to take pictures of people that they don't have to give you permission. In the transport, we also have an option to repeat the sample. Okay, well, 
Okay, well, it's illegal to take pictures of people that they don't have your permission. Okay, well, it's illegal to take pictures of people that they don't have. And that's a convenient option if you'd like to make further adjustments to the pitch or rate while continuing to listen. I'll restore these back to their defaults. On the right side, we've got a bit of information about the currently selected sample. And if you're not able to see quite enough information, hover your cursor just above the waveform, left click and drag upward. This will increase the height of the waveform as well as give you a bit more real estate to see the sample information. In the top left, we have a few more options. The first button being an insert. Clicking insert will do just as the name suggests and insert the selected sample on the currently selected track wherever your play cursor is. Up next is autoplay and I like to have this option turned on so that when I move to my next selection it'll automatically play. Go ahead, put me on social media. Oh, I love my life and I have my brand new grandbaby in there who we're trying to take for a while. Oh, I love my life and I have my brand new grand. As I stated earlier, a lot of the features that are in this media explorer are somewhat new to me because I generally don't work with samples. The next option is start on bar. With these particular samples, this doesn't seem to have much of an effect for me, but I would assume that if you have something that's actually rhythmic, that this would ensure that it starts at the beginning of a measure. The next option is pitch detection, which is turned off by default, followed by a toggle for the media information box, which is our box to the lower right. The next section has some options for matching tempo. We can enable tempo match if we do have something that's rhythmic that we'd like to match the tempo of our project, and you can also choose to play them at double speed or half speed. We also have an option to preserve the pitch when changing rate. That's turned on by default and as the name would suggest allows you to preserve the pitch of the sample when changing the play rate. And finally we have an option to dock the Media Explorer. Clicking this button will place the Media Explorer down in my dock beside the mixer. Now I can toggle back and forth between my mixer and the Media Explorer. For right now I prefer to have mine floating so I'll right click the tab for Media Explorer and uncheck Dock Media Explorer in Docker. While this is a pretty good way to inject samples into my Reaper projects, this is still about as efficient as opening the File Explorer in Windows. Let's take a look at a better way. We can see the current file path for the samples that we're using underneath the toolbar here. I'll go back a few folders by clicking the up arrow until I'm in the Reaper Sample Library folder. With my Reaper Sample Library folder selected, I can right click and choose Make Database from Folder. Reaper will take a moment to index each of the sound files that are inside that folder. If I open up this same folder in the Windows File Explorer, we'll drag this up and go back to the top level, you can see that I've actually got three different folders inside of here. I've got the Black Octopus Karen Pack, I've got Body Sounds Volume 2, and then I've got the Beer Can Drum Kit. Each of these folders contains more subfolders. For example, if I go into the Beer Can Drum Kit, I've got subfolders for Hats, Kicks, Miscellaneous, Snaps, Snares, and Toms. If I go back into the Media Explorer in Reaper, we can see that I'm currently still sorted by length. And if I wanted to look for anything in particular, I can always search in the search dialog in the upper right. The real benefit of using the database method is that you can tag each of your samples with whatever criteria that you would like to help you find them a lot easier. For example, if I were looking for hat samples, I can type the word hat into the filter at the top right, and this will show each of my samples that have the word hat in the name, but I can take this a bit further by adding custom tags. Let's take a listen to a few of these samples. And while there's not necessarily anything that's very distinct about any of these samples to justify tagging, I can right click any of these samples, go down to edit metadata tag, and I can choose to use any of these tags such as title, artist, album, beats per minute, description, or custom tags, and anything else that you see on the screen. If you have a large sample library, it can take you quite some time to categorize and tag all of your samples, but over time you'll have a neatly organized database that allows you to easily find the samples that you're looking for based on your own criteria. And you're not limited to only having one database. If I wanted to make a database specifically for my beer can drum kit, I can find that path again. We'll go to my external drive to Reaper Sample Library, and I can right click beer can drum kit and make a database from that folder as well. Now I have a new database that's isolated strictly to the files that are inside of the beer can drum kit subfolder. And since these beer can drum samples also exist inside of the same folder as my Reaper sample library, I can write metadata to these files and they'll show up in the opposite sample library. Let's take a look at this file, beercantom2.wave. I can right click the file, go to edit metadata tag, description, and I'll just make up a tag, your name here, and click OK. We can see that shows up under the description column, but it's in green. That suggests that this is temporary and it's not been written to the file yet. I can right click the file and choose write edited metadata to media 
and now that tag has been baked into the WAV file. If I go back to my Reaper sample library, one thing that I am finding is that this does not automatically refresh. So I'll right click the sample library and choose scan database for new files. And we can see now that my description tag has popped up in the database. As I said before, this can take a long time to go through and categorize and tag all of your sample files, but hopefully you can see how this will be beneficial in the long run. Let's place this back into the docker and insert a few samples. I'd like to place my samples on the Karen track, so I'll make sure that that's highlighted. We'll unsolo the track, and let's move to this interlude and insert a few samples. Let's find something that works. I'll filter for Karen, so that's the only thing that I'm seeing. And we'll test a few. I've had to turn most of these down by almost 6 dB, so I'll go ahead and set that as a default. Close enough, and let's test. Demonstrating mood behavior on a subway. I never thought I would like meet one in the wild. Yeah, I know. Yeah, actually encounter one. The default behavior in the Media Explorer for double clicking is to insert your sample. So with my cursor where I need it and the right track selected, I'll double click the sample, and it's now appeared in my project. This has also advanced my play cursor forward, so I'm ready to insert my next sample. Let's find another. Dogs and cats are not even allowed on the subway. That works. We'll double click that. And let's do one more. This is going right to the leasing office. That one's pretty good, but let's pitch it down a bit and try again. This is going right to the leasing office. I think I'd like for it to play slower as well, so let's adjust the rate and try again. This is going right to the leasing office. That works, so I'll double click this to insert. And let's see how this sounds in context. That last sample lined up just perfect. I'm not sure that samples will ever become a normal part of my workflow, but I've definitely had a great time playing around with this Kirin sample pack from Black Octopus. I don't know if this pack will be free forever, so definitely check the link in the description and get your own copy. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, or Super Thanks link below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. Cop right there if you want to tell them. Literally, you guys suck! Okay, I'm here, he's got it! You want me to leave or not? Get out of here! Okay, Karen. Okay. Okay, Karen. Karen! Get out of here! No, it here. does matter! There's a cop right there if you want to tell them. Oh, no, I love uh, my life and I have my brand new grandbaby in there who we're trying to take from this, this is what's killing people, is you, you're laughing! I can't stop talking as long as you're going to continue to photograph. I never thought I would like... Go ahead, put me on social media. You're a full pop. Seriously? Eventually, you will get a ticket. It's that simple. So, see, what do you do you without your cell phone? What the hell are you doing? You cannot record me. Get the hell away from my house and my job. Oh, my God.